Welcome to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio Channel, presented by Peter Waters. Having had the Yaesu FTX Optima for several weeks, I decided to remove the front panel and take it out in the form of the FTX-1 field for some portable operation. Now I currently use the Ampro antennas for mobile work because, uh, well, to be honest, they're very cheap and they're easy to put together. They're in two parts. You can pre-tune them and they stay in that position even when you take it apart and put it back together again. And here I'm putting it on the uh, SO23 mount at the back of the vehicle. I've got a converter to convert the SO239 to a 3 8 inch thread and then I can just screw this uh, uh, antenna on just like uh, this and it's uh, pretty firm. So let's uh, install the radio now. I stored the radio in an old uh, Elecroft bag actually and uh, it's, uh, it fits in there okay, keeps it, uh, keeps it safe and tidy. I've got uh, this rather ancient uh, key mounted on a wooden base, a paddle key, and I've also got a little tiny one that MFJ made. Uh, I use that occasionally. It's just, uh, well, it's so, so basic, but anyway, it does the job. This is my uh, QRP setup. I've got the radio set to um, five watts, of course, on the 20 meter band. Uh, the only whip I've got with me at the moment is a 20 meter whip. I've got this key, which I've had for ages, actually. This is a high mound key screwed onto a bit of wood, but it works fine doesn't uh, doesn't weigh much so it's easy to carry about and it's had a few biffs and bangs but it's uh, survived fortunately I've got this uh, camper van so I've got a nice uh, operating table here which um, is quite convenient and uh, well, I'll just show you just around, around a bit the rear seats are fairly wide and they're um, uh, individual seats so I can get to the back of the van and both front seats turn round to give even more room in the van and uh, even if it gets cold I've got a heater so it's quite comfortable to operate in the winter from here. Now to check VSWR, I select VSWR meter on the transceiver and then select AM so I've got a steady carrier. I find that if I've got the antenna resonance in the middle of the 20 meter band for example, the VSWR doesn't rise about about 1.8 at the band edges and the transceiver still gives full power even without a built-in antenna machine unit. Where would I be without my uh, coffee machine? And you see I've got a um, power supply there and that power supply will deliver of course 12 volts which I could uh, use for running the transceiver but I haven't today uh, but more importantly it delivers um, 230 volts AC so I can plug my coffee machine in and make myself a cup of coffee coffee capsules are really handy now if I switch this on now I think it would have about uh, 52%. Turn the uh, mains on there. And that's the fan going in the power supply here. It's quite a noise actually. I suppose it's to keep things cool. Cap under there. I'll flip this lever over. And there we are. One cup of coffee. Oh, cheers. Cup of coffee. Now, by the way, this is the view from uh, my van. Nice uh, blue sky, sunny day. Not that warm, unfortunately. It's only around about 14 or 15 degrees and a bit of a wind outside. But uh, anyway, it's nice. Uh, it's a nice view. The band was dead. I could just sit here and uh, watch the uh, puffy clouds in the distance go by. It's the first time I've bought the... Uh, FTX1 out uh, for some QRP activity and uh, seems to be working pretty well. And of course that battery, I've said before in the previous review, that um, 6.3 amp hour battery it lasts for ages so you don't need to worry about a backup battery. In fact I'll turn the power down to actually 5 watts because although it's, it's capable of 6 watts 
there's not much difference between 5 watts and 6 watts and uh, saves a bit of power I suppose but um, it's very easy to set up of course doesn't seem to be too fussy about a VSW. I've got a VSW of about 1.2, 1.3 to 1 at resonance on the CW end of the uh, band and um, it seems okay. But I can work up towards the uh, phone end where it rises to about so sort of 1.8, 1.9 near the top end of the phone band and it still delivers power into it so it's um, quite tolerant of uh, modest VSW. I actually think like most rigs um, 2 to 1 is the sort of point at which power starts to reduce. Um, the modern rigs, of course, are well protected. Um, you haven't got to worry about um, uh, your VSWR in terms of safety. Occasionally I get uh, uh, a note from somebody saying, you know, isn't it dangerous? Well, no, the modern rigs really... I mean, it's not, it's not good practice to run into high VSWRs if you don't have to. Um, but uh, the modern rigs are pretty tolerant. Um, once you go over 2 to 1, of course, you need... Um, probably an antenna matching unit. The FTX one doesn't have an internal matching unit, it does have one that clips on the back as an optional extra. Um, I tend now to use resonant antennas so I don't really need to have uh, a matching unit but if you do need one you can have one. They also well, they actually do two um, antenna matching units, there's another one which is designed for NFED wire and that's that's uh, remotely connected, it's got a, got a cable of that on a 10 or 15 foot long. So you can take the um, take the cable out outside of the van or wherever you're operating, and connect it to an NFED wire. And I think um, I think uh, it matches um, uh, the uh, any wire that's longer than about 30 or 40 foot would be okay for 80 through to 10 meters. Um, if you want 160 meters, I suspect you need a wire around about 60 or 70 foot. Um, I haven't actually checked the spec, but anyway, you can get. Um, an antenna matching unit for an NFED wire. And I suppose if you're going to do QRP work um, and you're not going to use um, a resonant antenna, then that's probably quite a quite a good investment. There's plenty of uh, audio from this uh, radio. And uh, I've said before that it's got quite a quiet receiver. I know there's some, some noise here, but uh, relative to other transceivers, it's uh, got quite a low noise level. So let's have a listen up the uh, SSB end to see what we can we can hear. Remember, I'm just using a uh, short whip. Sounds sounds like short skip to Scotland, actually. Sorry, you couldn't um, see the screen that well um, because there's so much sun today, which <laughs> is very welcome. It's not that warm actually, it's only about 14 degrees. We are just hearing someone, we are just hearing someone. Can you uh, try again please? Nope, I'm sorry, I am not hearing, uh, really not hearing anything, not hearing anything. Uh, GS, zero, RIV, Golf Sierra, zero, Romeo, Italy, Victor calling. Thank you for the call and thank you for the nice report. My name is John, Julie Tosker Hotel, November. And we are in the uh, Outer Hebrides off the northwest coast of Scotland. Special activation. Uh, Sierra Papa 305, Radio America Foxtrot. This activation is for 85 years Polish wings in the Battle of Britain. 85 years commemorate for Polish wings in the Yes, that station was, uh, I've worked that station on CW, celebrating 85 years um, of the Battle of Britain, when, of course, uh, Poland played a very important part in the RAF um, during the Battle of Britain, and that's a celebration station. I, say, I worked him a few days ago on CW. Well, I suppose I should have bought a microphone, really, but I didn't. I tend to operate a lot of CW, but I enjoy CW. Um, that station from Scotland, it was in the Outer Hebrides. Um, he was a strong signal. I, I'm pretty sure you would have heard me even running five or six watts, but um, I didn't have a microphone. But anyway, how does it work on CW? Well, it works very well, actually. Um, the selectivity is good. Um, you, can, you can't operate full braking. Well, well, you could do, but... Um, 
uh, there is a there is a changeover relay of some sort there. You can just about hear it, but um, you can work semi brake in no problem at all. I tend to have about um, two uh, or three hundred milliseconds delay before going back to receive, and that seems to work okay. I never did like um, full brake in it; just did my ears in a bit. <laughs> But no, the, the transceiver works very well on CW. If you're a CW enthusiast, then uh, you will enjoy it. And of course, CW does have the advantage of getting through when um, you're running low power. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I tend to operate CW, particularly when I'm out portable, because um, the uh, even the low power signal... And I, I found um, during this morning, I've worked about five or six stations on CW, and really and truly, I've had no problem at all. Um, the advantage of uh, operating portable, um, the location where I am, or indeed when you're at portable, usually you've got a very low noise level. And I, I've said before that this uh, radio has got a low um, noise uh, no, noise level, and it's a joy when you're at portable. And you know, just wish it was like that at home. <laughs> but no, for if you're a CW operator, uh, you will enjoy this transceiver. One feature which I do like, I didn't actually realise the advantage of it. Um, very often in transceivers you go into the menu system and the, the menu comes up on the screen and you've got all the various things that you can do and so forth. Well this, with this transceiver and uh, like other um, Yesu transceivers, when you go into the menu, the menu appears on the screen as, as short headings like uh, power and um, delay etc etc, mic gain. Um, but it doesn't hide the frequency, it doesn't actually prevent you operating the transceiver. So the advantage of the Yesu menu is that when you, when you press it and select it, you can still see the important part of the screen, like the S-meter, um, the power, uh, the frequency, etc. So it means so you can actually operate with the menu open, and it, sometimes it's convenient. For CW example, um, you, can, you can adjust the speed and so forth, and uh, the, the, the monitor frequency, the monitor tone, um, whilst you're actually operating, you haven't got a, it doesn't, the, the menu system doesn't blank off the screen, which is quite a good feature actually. If, for example, you're operating CW, press the function button, select the menu item for speed, adjust the speed, and then once you come out of the uh, menu system, that function button is programmed to adjust speed. If you fancy some higher power operation, of course, and you've got the Optima, then the amplifier unit can be taken out and put uh, in the back of the car and just the control head in the front of the car. Of course, you can also operate on the VHF bands 2 meters and 70 sems as a mobile FM unit. And if you're going to an air show, you can also select one of the air band frequencies to monitor what's going on at the air show. Another very welcome feature on the back of the FTX-1 field is the fact that you've got separate antenna ports for VHF and for HF. So it means to say that you don't need a diplex, so you can have two separate antenna systems connected to the back of the transceiver. I'm not sure whether Yesu are going to produce a special bag for the FTX-1. I've got my camera bag here and the radio fits neatly into the top of the bag. And it's very quick to take it out with the battery attached, of course, and get ready to go on the air. I wouldn't go HF mobile with this radio on the move because I think it's too dangerous fiddling about the tuning. But operating uh, FM, simplex or repeater is a different matter. So I thought I'd try it and see how it fit into my car. I say car, but actually I cho chose my camper van to try it. I've got a shelf just above the glove box, which is quite deep and it fits nicely in there. I've also got a shelf on, on the top of the dashboard there. And again, it fits quite nicely in there. So two choices. Here's the radio mounted in the car. Now listen to how well the DX button works on FM. It worked pretty well on aircraft AM monitoring as well. The DX button actually works quite well. It's really a form of noise cancelling on FM and AM transmissions. It certainly reduces the noise. I would say it uh, is equal to about a 6 or 9 dB increase in signal strength. But uh, 
I think if I was operating an extensive FM operation, uh, particularly mobile, I would tend to have it in all the time because it certainly does give a much quieter background and uh, yeah, it worked well. So how does the FTX1 field work as a well, a field transceiver, a transceiver out and about? I think it works very well. As I've said on several occasions, it's got a very, very quiet receiver. It's got a lot of features in it, more features than uh, most, well I say most, probably more features than other QRP transceivers, I should expect because it is a premium priced transceiver, but I think it's great value for money. I was really impressed with the way it works, the way it performs. I was knocked out by the battery life, I mean it's just unbelievable the battery life. I've been out and about on a couple of occasions now, um, extensively receiving, but obviously transmitting at you know, 10 or 12 QSOs. I want to look at the battery indicator, it's virtually full. So it really does mean to say that if you're going to go out um, on an adventure somewhere, you don't have to worry about battery power, it's going to last you all day. And I do like the menu system, the menu system is a bit different to other transceivers but once you get used to it you realize that you can have the menu system open and still be operating the menu system doesn't blank out all the screen you know you've still got the s meter or the power meter or whatever it's set to and obviously you've got the frequency um, I do enjoy the fact that it's got air band on it it's quite nice it's quite uh, fascinating to listen to that uh, when you're near an airport but as a transceiver, yeah, it works extremely well on CW. I use it extensively on CW. It works very, very well indeed. No problems at all with it. Um, you can have some very fine tuning on it. The selectivity is good. You can close the selectivity right down until you've, well, basically all you're hearing is just one narrow frequency. And this morning I was working a um, German station. Well, I say working him, and I was trying to work him, and then I put the selective, selectivity right in. Um, he wasn't very strong, he was around about 4 and 4, but with the selectivity screwed in, I did manage to work him, and I found that he was running just 1 watt, conditions weren't very good, he wasn't very strong, I was running 10 watts and of course he copied me okay, but he was running just 1 watt, but nevertheless I did copy the signal, and it was all down to the superb selectivity on the transceiver. So, there we are. It's been an interesting experience. I'm going to do some more work with the FTX1 because there's a lot more to be learnt about it and there's a lot more performance factors to look at and see how we can best adjust them to suit perhaps my way of operation or your way of operation. But there we are, that's the FTX1. So, if you're interested in this transceiver, uh, you want to know more about it in terms of what deals we can do, then give us a call. We do do part exchange, do some good part exchange deals. So don't be frightened to pick up the phone and talk to one of the guys there. Tell them you saw my video and uh, see what sort of deal they can do. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. In the meantime, I do value your support on this channel. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. And uh, in the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Oh! got to tell you about a spy radio there's an interesting video coming up about spy radio this radio is being produced several thousand miles away from here at a secret location I can't tell you where it is but I can tell you that it's a reproduction of a spy radio that was used during the Second World War there's been a lot of work done on this radio it's absolutely identical to the original one. It's taken several years to get all the parts together, to copy the parts so that everything is identical. It won't be on general sale. There will be one shipped to the UK, which I will have. There will be another one shipped to France. Probably quite appropriate. But I'll let you know more about this in an upcoming video, so stick around.